When we fill objects in Illustrator, by selecting the object, selecting fill and then a colour from the colour panel, it fills the entire surface area of the selected object. This principle works just fine for a large majority of applications, however there are other situations in which we need to fill with colour in a different way. Here we have a pattern composed of overlapping circles. With thoughtful colouring and the correct tool, which I'll go on to introduce, we can use this arrangement to develop an interesting 70s style wallpaper pattern. To do this, however, we can't settle for filling shapes in their entirety. Instead, we need to fill the shapes where they overlap. And this is the primary function of the Live Paint Bucket tool. Before we can use this tool, we need to make the object or object a live paint group. And we do this by selecting all of these. And we go to object, scrolling down to live paint, we select make. Keyboard shortcut is Alt, Command or Control and X. So now you'll see in the layers panel, if I expand layer 1, we have this group named live paint. Expanding this group, you'll see all of those objects, the circles in this case, in the Live Paint group. And all of these will be subject to the effect of the Live Paint Bucket tool. And that tool can be found here in the Tools panel, where the Shape Builder tool resides. If it isn't visible, simply click your mouse button and hold, and in the Flyout we can select Live Paint Bucket, Keyboard shortcut is K. Now if we take a closer look at the cursor, we can observe that there are three adjoined boxes with colours in them. Or in this case we have brown, a non-colour and white. This is the Live Paint Bucket Tool Colour Picker. And this is a very handy feature of this tool. Using the arrows on the keyboard, we can select colours within a swatch without having to physically go to the colour or swatch panels. If we look at the swatch panel, you can see me cycling through the colours using left and right arrows on the keyboard. The box in the middle on my cursor shows the currently selected colour, in this case red, and the left and right boxes, black and yellow, show the previous and forthcoming colours respectively, which appear in the colour group. In the swatches panel, I currently have the Illustrator default colours. The top three lines is a colour group with various colours, which I can scroll through with left and right arrow keys on the keyboard, as demonstrated. I also have greys and brights colour groups. So I can access this colour group or whatever other colour groups may be present by using the up and down arrows on the keyboard. So pressing down, I'm now selecting the greys colour group. And now I can use the left and right keys again to select the colour within this group. I can do the same by pressing down again to enter into the bright colour group. And naturally, I can go left and right to select a colour within the brights group. I can then use the up arrow to do exactly the reverse and move back up the groups. The Live Paint Bucket tool is often used in conjunction with a custom colour group, i.e. a set of colours which you've defined yourself. This allows you to cycle through more relevant colours. But colour groups are a separate topic. And for simplicity, I will just choose from the range of browns we have here in the bottom line of the first colour group. When we don't have the Live Paint Bucket tool selected, when we have the Selection tool selected, for example, when we mouse over these objects, you'll see that each circle is highlighted individually. With the Live Paint Bucket tool selected, when we do exactly the same thing, You'll see that the entire circles are no longer selected, but the portions of the circles in which overlaps are occurring. And it's these parts which we can assign different coloured fills to. So let's begin with the Live Paint Bucket tool still selected. I'm going to select Stroke, and I'm going to select None for this. I'm going to select Fill, 
And for this, I'm going to go to the swatches and I'm going to select a dark brown. Moving in, I'm going to color this a dark brown. All of these shapes here, and I'm going to leave out the leaf shapes, which I'm going to color a lighter brown. And so, looking at my cursor, I can press left on the keyboard to locate that lighter brown color. And I can also see this in the color panel as it cycles through the browns. And then I can click into those shapes, which I wish to assign that color to. So running through all of these leaf shapes. We do have various means available to us in Illustrator to develop repetitive patterns, but we're doing this just for the sake of the demonstration of the tool. So there we have it. We've selectively chosen those colors and we've applied them to the overlaps of the circle using the live paint bucket tool. As mentioned earlier, we went through the crucial step of going to Object, Live, Paint and Make. Now that we've made that group, we can't assign fills any other way but by using the Live Paint Bucket tool. If we wish to go back to conventional means, we can simply select the object, going to Object, Live, Paint and Release. So now you'll see that those live paint colors are no longer applicable and the live paint bucket tool, as previously seen in the layers panel, no longer exists. And we need to assign colors in the conventional way. That is selecting a circle and then assigning a fill. But as mentioned, we don't have the capability of addressing the overlaps because that is the function of the live paint bucket tool. So undoing this to return back to our creation. Now, as you've seen, the Live Paint Bucket tool, which its name suggests, is like pouring a can of paint into a given area or container. Whether we use this analogy or if your experience with similar paint bucket tools in other graphic software, you'd know that if there's a gap in a shape's outline, the fill will spill out. In this case, the Live Paint Bucket tool simply will not allow us to make this error. So without the proper settings applied, which I'll go on to explain, Illustrator simply does not allow us to fill a shape with a gap. To compensate for this, the Live Paint Bucket tool in Illustrator has gap options. Before we explore the gap options, I'm going to create a gap in one of these circles. So selecting the eraser tool, I'm going to put a gap in this circle down here. Now, with the entire object selected, that is all of the pattern, I'm going to go to object, scrolling down to live paint, I'm going to select gap options. From here we can define what size gap should be detected. Now this will need trial and error on your part so that you know what is small, what is medium and what is large. And we can define those here, including custom gaps also. The gap preview color is set to red. Currently, since our pattern is selected, Illustrator tells us that there's no gaps found. That is small gaps. If we increase this to medium gaps, Illustrator hasn't trapped this neither as a medium gap. Going to large gaps, Illustrator tells us that there's one gap found. With this located, you'll see that on the actual pattern itself, it's highlighted in that red color, which is stipulated here, light red. If I was to change this to green, you'd see that it's highlighted in green. So Illustrator is essentially going to seal off this area. Clicking OK, deselecting the entire pattern. I'm going to select a fill color, select orange, and with the live paint bucket tool selected, I'm going to click into this part of the circle with the gap. And you'll see that Illustrator has disregarded the gap and allowed us to fill that section of the shape. So if you have work which is less than perfect, or your art features gaps as a trait, you may wish to take advantage of the gap options. As a finisher, I'm going to show why this tool is called the Live Paint Bucket Tool. 
Using the direct selection tool, we can select any one of these circles and move it around. Now you'll see how different this is from the conventional fill. Illustrator is filling in those sections live. As the object is moved, the fill moves with it. And this is something we're able to do in our workflow. Move objects around and have them filled automatically. So that wraps up the live paint bucket tool. Of course, we aren't limited to patterns of circles or any other patterns for that matter. Anytime you find yourself in need of filling areas which are formed by overlapping shapes, the live paint bucket tool is likely to be your solution.